I'm Adam Todd, and welcome to Classroom Dynamics, a teacher podcast. I believe that the best way to engage students in a 21st century classroom is to immerse them with the transformative tools that will empower each and every one of them to excel in the future world that awaits. My focus is to ignite the spark that propels you and your students into an advanced tomorrow, and your journey into that future starts right now. Dynamics is supported by Logitech. As education continues to evolve, so does Logitech Education, your partner in content creation for the classroom. With Logitech's cutting-edge technology, students not only learn but also become content creators. Whether it's in person or online, Logitech's tools are designed to inspire educators and learners alike. Capture every educational moment in stunning detail and edit, produce, and share your creative journey with ease. Logitech Education, inspiring the next generation of creators. For more, visit Logitech.com slash education. Transforming classrooms, one innovation at a time. Introducing the Logitech Zone Learn headset, a sleek and sophisticated tool crafted to enhance your learning experience. Designed for adaptability, this cutting-edge headset effortlessly transforms any environment into a focused learning zone, be it at home, in a bustling classroom, or on the move. With crystal clear audio and advanced noise canceling technology, the Zone Learn headset tailors a personalized learning space for your undisturbed concentration. Immerse yourself in coursework, language learning, or virtual presentations with confidence. The precision microphone ensures your voice is heard clearly in virtual classes and meetings, adding impact to your presentations and discussions. Logitech Zone Learn, where sleek design meets advanced technology, revolutionizing the way you learn. Elevate your study sessions enhance virtual experiences and embrace the future of education with Logitech. Always connected, always focused, always learning. The Zone Learn headset, your key to success. For over 20 years, Higher Ground has designed functional technology protection, helping students to work or learn anytime, anywhere. I'm Mark, president of Higher Ground, and I want to share with you how you can get a free sample of any of our rugged shells, sleeves, or clear backpacks. Visit hggear.com forward slash sample and use your school's email and address. One thing, don't tell Alex because he'll be stuck with all the paperwork. Request yours and see for yourself how Higher Ground can help save your students and school downtime and money. Just remember, don't tell Alex. Mark, what are all these sample requests filling my inbox? Welcome to Classroom Dynamics, the podcast where we get into the exciting world of technology and education. Hi everybody, I'm your host Adam Todd and today we're talking about the colorful world of Brush Ninja Animation created by the visionary mind of Ben Gilbanks. Brush Ninja Animation, a digital animation tool, is revolutionizing the way teachers can have students synthesize new material. Imagine a digital canvas where creativity knows no bounds. That's exactly what Brush Ninja offers with an intuitive interface and a plethora of tools. Students and educators, they can all bring ideas to life with ease. Ben Gilbanks, the creator behind Brush Ninja, along with other free digital art resources, has built a tool in Brush Ninja Animation that not only captures the imagination, but also enhances learning across various curriculum areas. From history to science to media arts and design, Brush Ninja Animation provides a dynamic platform for students to express their understanding in a visually stunning way. But that's not all. In the world of mathematics, Brush Ninja can serve as a bridge between theoretical concepts and practical application. Students can animate graphical representations, geometric figures, and even fractions into dynamic visual representations that deepen comprehension and engagement. For language arts, Ben Gilbanks' creation can add a new dimension to creative writing and storytelling. Imagine students bringing characters to life that they may have created in their writer's workshop periods, creating vibrant animated narratives that not only showcase their writing skills, but also their creative digital arts flair. Students can now literally turn their writing into an animated story for other students to enjoy. And perhaps one of the best ways to use Brush Ninja Animation is in the sciences where Brush Ninja Animation can transform complex concepts into accessible interactive lessons. 
from demonstrating cell division to physical forces, students can animate cycles, making the depth of learning an intriguing and unforgettable experience. So if you're an educator in elementary school or even in middle school, you may want to embrace Brush Ninja into your classroom. This tool isn't just about animation, it's about empowering students to become storytellers, digital creators, and critical thinkers. Now coming up next, we'll sit down with the creator of Brush Ninja Animation, Ben Gilbanks, to talk all about Brush Ninja. We'll be right back. Don't go away. Are you a dedicated educator searching for fresh and engaging resources to inspire your students? Look no further than highly motivated on Teachers Pay Teachers. Discover a treasure trove of easy to use lesson plans, vibrant visuals, and interactive activities designed to captivate young minds and ignite their love for learning. Unlock the potential within your classroom with highly motivated from differentiated lap books to test prep passages on a multitude of topics. Our wide range of materials cater to most elementary and middle school grade levels. Join the community of passionate teachers who have already transformed their classrooms. Visit Highly Motivated on Teachers Pay Teachers and get ready to inspire, motivate, and empower your students like never before. Highly motivated on Teachers Pay Teachers, where knowledge meets inspiration. He's a WordPress developer, web designer, and the creator of Brush Ninja Animation. I'd like to welcome Ben Gilbanks to Classroom Dynamics. It's so nice to have you here today to talk all about this amazing animation tool for younger students. Hi, it's great to be here. Today we're talking about how animation creation in the classroom could be a huge learning opportunity for students and how it can be connected to so many different curriculum areas. For teachers who don't know what Brush Ninja animation is, what is it and what can you do with the program? Um, okay, so Brush Ninja is a collection of free creative tools. Um, I've got a, a selection of them, but the most popular one is the first one I made, and it's an animated GIF creator. Uh, it's a really simple app that allows you to create your own animations in a web browser and then download them as animated GIFs. Uh, you do this by drawing images one at a time and then pressing the play button and they play back on the screen in front of you. Um, I wanted to make it understandable and usable by anyone. And it all runs as a web page on your computer. You don't need an account or anything like that. It's just there and free and you can make whatever you like. What inspired you to create Brush Ninja Animation and really the whole suite of Brush Ninja apps? And did you really ever envision it that it would be in, utilized in classrooms all over the world? Or was that part of the goal in the first place? So I've been interested in art and animation for since I was tiny, forever. Um, and then in 95, Toy Story was released. And that was like a, a turning point for me. I, I wanted to become a, a digital artist, make computer graphics and that sort of thing. I, I really wanted to work for Pixar. So I went to university and I studied digital art. And after university, I got a job at miniclip.com, which maybe some of the older people will remember. It's a, it was an online gaming site. We, we made flash games um, and they had a, an app on there that they released called Sketchstar, where you could create animations in your web browser. Um, and it was really popular and it was also really expensive to run because they hosted all of the animations on their site and they had a whole team of moderators who would view all of the animations before they were published and all these other things that were probably a bit uh, overkill for the project. Um, but they decided it, it wasn't making enough money to justify running all of these things, so they closed it down. And when they did, I asked if I could make my own version. And I started, but it was a bit much for me, um, so I stopped and put it to one side. And then a few years later, I left Miniclip and was thinking about what I'd do next. And I remembered this project. So I set about thinking how I could simplify it um, and make this thing that's simpler that anyone could use. And that ended up becoming Brush Ninja. Um, I made it so that you could run it in the web browser so that it didn't save things to the servers. It would save it to your own computer. Um, I curate the gallery myself. It's not all published automatically, so I don't have to pay moderators anything. Um, yeah, so it's just a lot simpler. Um, there's no user account, so it stores no personal information. And it's, it seems to have done quite well. Um, in terms of schools, I would love to say it was intentional, but I, I hadn't planned for uh, schools to use it as they are. It was just something that I made. I, I like making uh, fun things. But when I made it, well, after I'd released it, I, I searched for Sketchstar, this mini clip project. 
to see who'd written about it. And there were a, a bunch of education blogs. So I contacted them and asked them if they'd be interested in uh, my app. And they did. Uh, they published about it. And now schools, uh, teachers started using it. And um, yeah, it's, it's gone on from there. Yeah, I, I, I teach media arts technology. And one of the units I do is animation. The kids absolutely love animation. And, and one of the ver very first projects that we do is just a bouncing ball, just a bouncing okay. ball, looking at it you know, the physics of it, how is it going to, you know, realistically come down and, and kind of absorb that energy so it could throw it back up. And, and how does that ball eventually stop? And yeah. the kids, when they, when they see that and do that, it is amazing. The, the engagement, the, um, just the overall excitement of creating something that's now moving, you know, when they're growing up and they're, they're drawing on paper or even on, on computers, it's most times a two dimensional stagnant picture, but here they could actually create something that has movement and life to it. And they absolutely love that. So, and it's good to know that your, your experience in the video game and web design industry was that background for you. And, and so I, I think, you know, putting that all together makes something amazing when creating brush ninja. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> it yeah. definitely does. It definitely does. Yeah, I'm really into animation in general. Just, I mean, I've got an eight year old now um, and we love watching cartoons together. And I'd, I'd really quite like to make a cartoon just as a, another project, <laughs> but okay. maybe one day. Well, it's funny too, because after my animation unit or sometimes during it, I'll have kids come up to me and say, I want to work for Pixar. I want to do this for a living. And and we're talking about kids who are, you know, nine, 10, 11 years old, that yeah, the, the idea, right? Isn't that cool? It's the idea yeah. of, of knowing, okay, this is something that is captured their attention and their imagination and they could actually see themselves doing that because you know all content creation now is just off the hook with with kids mm -hmm. they love it and to have a, a student come up to you and say i want to do this one day I, I, I this is my plan i'm like wow that's impressive yeah I, I mean i love when people post on social media you get teachers posting um brush ninja being used in their classroom and the artworks that students have created and it's just amazing seeing all this like knowing that my little app that i made on a whim is, is now being used by uh, kids to sort of to educate future generations is uh yeah it's amazing for me we had the um the creator of tux paint um a while back and um right, he said right. he even said the same thing you know i i made it as kind of like a side project and look what happened yeah right? how the world kind of like just takes to it and the application that you put together it may not be the application that teachers are using so to speak, in terms of your intentionality of it, but yeah. the broad scope of what you can do with Russian Ninja animation is just amazing. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. The the interface of Russian Ninja, if you really look at it, it's very, like you said, it's very simplistic. It's very user friendly, yet it's very powerful. Can you walk us through some of the key features that students and educators can use right away, regardless of their technological comfort level? Yeah, sure. So as I said, I used to work in video games. So thinking about um, usability and getting people to um, use the app as or, or the game as quickly as possible is something that I've spent a lot of time thinking about. Um, so to start with, as soon as you load the app up, the load the web page, you'll be presented with a canvas, um, a, like a white box that you can draw in, and you'll instantly be able to draw. Um, I think I chose pink as the default color, um, but you can change your colors, you can change your brush sizes. And once you've done a little smiley face or whatever you want to draw first, you can press the add new frame button and draw another smiley face or a sad face and then press the play button and instantly you've got an animation that you can get something sort of playing in 20 seconds. But then beyond that, there's uh, there's a shapes tool so that you can add shapes like squares and circles and stars, but also more uh, advanced shapes like vehicles and mathematical symbols and electronic symbols and uh, all sorts of different things like that. Some of the symbols in there I've had suggested by teachers actually, so to, to help them in the classroom. Um, there's also a select tool. So all of the shapes that you draw are actually vector shapes. So that means that they can be selected and moved and rotated. Um, which makes creating animations a lot easier because so you, you can, don't you don't technically have to recreate that then right no so you you can create something on one frame and then copy and paste it to another frame mm -hmm. like individual parts so if you drew a face you could copy and paste the eyes um, from one frame to another you don't have to keep redrawing them 
Mm. But then once they've been moved, you can drag them and rotate them and squash them and uh, create an animation that way. So it's, it saves a bit of time and yeah, makes it a bit easier to use or create longer animations. Speaking of longer animations, how many frames can a student use to create their animation? Is there a limit to how many they can use? I don't think so. I, th- I think it's limited by the computer rather than the app. So it's, it's when your computer stops responding, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's a <laughs> memory size rather than uh, something built into the app. That's that's really great because that way you really do have, oh my goodness, you have a, an unlimited amount of space almost then to create a story or an animation. You're not really limited to a beginning and then an end in a very short span of time. No, absolutely. I, I was looking for animations this morning, actually, and I found one, someone on Reddit that said that they made an animation that was 260 frames, I think. And at 12 frames a second, that's quite long sort of 20 or 30 mm-hmm. seconds of animation it's really good as well that's amazing <laughs> that's yeah. amazing i just it, the technology just you know even at my age blows my mind i know the kids probably just almost assume that this is has always been around but for me and for you <laughs> it it really hasn't and and it's no. really it's really cool to actually have that when you think about incorporating animation into different curriculum areas it not only can enhance learning but it can create stronger connections to the subject matter that they're working on um and students using brush ninja animation can create and produce some amazing stunning examples when showcasing what they're learning so whether it's you know um, social studies or science uh, digital media arts even math like you mentioned whatever they're studying what ways have you seen brush ninja animation used by students um well like i say i mean just anytime i see anything i'm amazed and <laughs> the fact that people are using it is brilliant mm. but recent examples um i saw someone uh, they'd I think they must have been teaching physics or science and they were they had a big board with lots of different physical properties and then students were animating them so they had animations of like con- converting uh, solids to liquids to gases or showing forces things falling and I think there's an Isaac Newton animation the apple dropping on his head thing and I've also seen things in language classes so ch- uh, children learning Spanish and drawing objects and then writing the Spanish word for them. Um, mm-hmm. And then similar in maths, they're sort of drawing maths equations or how chemical formulae work together. Um, but also I, I quite like seeing the, maybe I shouldn't say this on an education podcast, but I, I quite like seeing the, the non-educational things that they're often still done in school is things like holiday animations. Like we don't celebrate Thanksgiving here, but there, there was a lot of Thanksgiving animations. Um, and I quite like the sort of more personal thing. Um, and then similarly, uh, Father's Day and Mother's Day and Valentine's Day, seeing people sort of expressing emotions is not something you see that often on social media, but it's, it's quite nice to see these animations of sort of children sort of uh, saying nice things to people. It's so um, true. And- I'm glad you actually brought up the language arts and the, and that portion of it, because, you know, a lot of kids sometimes to, to express themselves in writing, it could be a challenge for them. They may not be a writer. That might not be something they're interested in, but they could draw, you know, they could tell yeah. a story through animation. And And so even through language arts, I I love that you pointed that out, because sometimes even with students who are learning a second language or that social emotional uh, connection to it, you really can capture that in in an animation. Yeah, yeah, it's really nice to see. So with all of the technology that's out there for teachers to use, they really appreciate when they have good access to professional development and support. And Brush Ninja does offer plenty of professional development resources for teachers on the Brush Ninja website. You provided that. Can you go through some? of the resources that are available to teachers? Yeah, sure. So I've tried to make things as useful as possible for teachers when teachers started uh, using Brush Ninja and often they'd contact me and I'd ask for feedback and how I can improve it to make it useful for them. Um, And one of the things that I've done is I've created lesson plans. So I'm not a teacher, obviously I'm a programmer um, and I've done all this myself. So I hope that it's useful, but I've created these lesson plans that I, I see as starting points or ideas or inspiration for teachers um, and they go over how you can use or how you could use the animation creator in the classroom in a variety of subjects because I, I didn't oh I don't see Brush Ninja as just being used for art so I've got things for history and geography and maths in there as well so sort of trying to show how how Brush Ninja could be used and I've I've tried to lay it out as I imagine a lesson plan would be made, but I I don't know if it's correct or not. Um, I've also got a, an educational gallery 
Um, I've got a couple of galleries on on the website. Um, one is just animations that aren't education related, but then the educational gallery is uh, tweets and Instagram posts that teachers have published that show Brush Ninja being used in the classroom and show artworks that students have created. And I think, I mean, firstly, for me, as I've said a couple of times, I, I just really like seeing this. Um, but also for teachers, I think it would be nice inspiration to see how you could use the tool in the classroom. Um, I also have uh, a YouTube channel and I've only got maybe a dozen uh, videos on there at the moment, but it shows how to use Brush Ninja um, and how to use some of the more advanced features. So if you are new to it, it's, it might be a good way to get up to speed quite quickly. Um, and then I've also got a glossary of animation terms and I, I don't know how useful it is for teachers, but I, th I think it's quite interesting, especially if you're doing art specifically and learning about animation, then it would be a good way to um, learn some of the more technical aspects. No, I, you know, I think teachers do appreciate when even those starting points, you know, I've used the videos from your YouTube channel um, to show the kids. And besides that initial, you know, start to a, a lesson, um, you know, engagement, videos sometimes showcasing how to do it work a hundred times better than me showing them. Uh, they're, they're so just in, you know, they're so into the, the video and watching it that sometimes you can show that short clip and say, okay, guys, go ahead and let's see what you create. And not only do they replicate or try what has been shown in the videos, but then they go off and start to learn other tools on their own just by itself. It happens automatically. And I think that is something that teachers love to see. Being in the classroom, you don't always want to spoon feed everything to the kids. You want to give them a little bit of freedom to, you know, have some choice or freedom to be able to explore on their own. Some self-directed learning goes a long way, especially when they start to then explain to one another, you know, what they're using and how did they do that? And um, and they kind of teach each other in, in that regard. And I think it's amazing that you have that kind of support because teachers, they're thirsty for that. They have so much going on during the course of the day. So to even have that starting point, I think is a huge part of it. Um, even on your blog, you know, some of the things that you have on there can explain and give teachers ideas and get their, their, you know, thoughts going as to how they want to use it. If they're using it just for, you know, plain old art, um, or if it's going to be some higher end curriculum area like science or social studies. So I think they do appreciate that. I appreciate that because it then allows me to pass that information on to the kids so much easier. And it's so much better when it comes from a professional like you who have, you know, you've been in that in that position for so long and can explain things the way you would like it to be explained, especially with the terms. So even vocabulary, you know, they're going to use that vocabulary. They're going to see that vocabulary to put that vocabulary up on a word wall or to use it in conversation it goes a long way when learning a new program like this. That's great. I'm, I'm pleased it's useful. Well, listen, this has been so much fun and it's been so cool to sit and chat with you about Brush Ninja animation and what it can do for teachers and their students. Because like I said, I use it in my class um, and it's always fun to chat with the person who's behind the program. So this was such a treat for me. Um, before we go, tell everyone where they can go to find out more about the whole suite of Brush Ninja applications. Um, yeah, thanks for having me. Um, the The website is brush.ninja, but brushninja.com also works. It will forward you to the right place. Um, and there's loads of stuff on there. I, I use it like a playground. So uh, the animations app is the main app, but there's lots of creative things that um, hopefully you can use in the classroom. And uh, what about all your social media? Oh, yeah. Um, I'm Binary Moon on almost everything. So that's like binary as in zeros and ones. Moon. All right. For those of you who have been listening, thank you for tuning in today. And make sure you share what you've learned or any takeaways or reflections that you've had. And tag us on Twitter at Class Dynamics or Instagram at Classroom Dynamics Podcast. We always look forward to hearing your thoughts on our episodes, especially this one, and sharing the different ways in which you're using what you've learned. You can also help support Classroom Dynamics with as little as $3 a month at classroomdynamicspodcast.buzzsprout.com. Once again, I'd like to thank Ben Gilbanks of Binary Moon and Brush Ninja for joining us today on Classroom Dynamics. It has been such a pleasure having you with us, and uh, hopefully we'll have you again in the future. Yeah, absolutely. It's been great fun. Thank you. And that brings us to the end of this episode of Classroom Dynamics, where knowledge and inspiration meets innovation. I hope you've enjoyed today's discussion and found it both insightful and uplifting. 
As always, my goal is to provide you with practical strategies, engaging stories, and powerful insights that can fuel your motivation as an educator. I believe that when knowledge and inspiration do come together, incredible things can happen in your classroom. And for all of you who may feel that it's too late to strengthen your craft, I challenge you to make it your mission to do so. You've worked hard to get to where you are today, and it's never too late to infuse new life into your work. So why not make today that day to do so? I'm Adam Todd, and you've been listening to Classroom Dynamics, a teacher podcast. You can follow Classroom Dynamics on X at Class Dynamics or on Instagram at Classroom Dynamics Podcast. If you haven't already, go to Apple Podcasts and subscribe, rate, and review this podcast. And if you know a teacher who may benefit from today's show, please share it with them. We'll be back soon with more captivating conversations, inspiring stories, and strategies that you can implement into your everyday routines. Until then, keep igniting that spark in your classroom and never stop believing in the incredible impact you have as an educator. You're more powerful and inspirational than you think. If you like this episode, you'll enjoy our conversation with Bill Kendrick, the code writer, digital artist, and creator behind the beloved software sensation Tux Paint. Discover the inspiring journey of this visionary developer and educator who has dedicated his life to making art and creativity accessible to children around the globe. From the inception of Tux Paint to its enduring impact on young minds, we'll explore Bill Kendrick's passion for fostering creativity, his commitment to open source principles, and the profound influence he's had on the world of educational software. Tune in to uncover the remarkable story of Bill Kendrick and his contribution to the world of digital art and learning through Tux Paint. Um, well, two things. Uh, one, the open source, obviously, yeah, it makes it it makes it free as in, as in price. Freeze and beer, so they used to say. Freeze and speech, freeze and beer. So the, the fact that it's freeze and beer, schools can use it. They don't need to pay for it. That is a huge benefit. But the fact that it's open source, um, not only does that allow contributors to work on it but i think they they feel safe doing so they feel like if i contribute to this thing it's going to remain open and free and i'm not just giving my work to some random guy named bill who's going to go squander it someday and decide or you know end the project or whatever it's it's always going to be there forever basically um and it would not be where it is right now without all the contributions from literally hundreds of people 